Well, that service I did to this heater seems to have done the trick because, as you see, it's running a nice blue flame, nice and hot. And where are we? Half a tank. Beforehand, it would have just been heating up the spring. So, much better. I'll still get a new wick for it soon, but there's no real need because it's working fine. And yeah, with the fiberglass wicks, you've got to burn them dry every now and again just to get rid of the balls of tar and all that other crap on them. And they work nicely again. Well, today I'm doing the sway bar bushes on this Mercedes. Because they're a little bit sad. As you can see, they're up against the firewall on this one. One's behind the brake booster. Yay! I've already got them out. The battery goes here normally. I've got one out, I'll lubricate the bar and put the new one in. And here's the old one. As you can see, it's a little bit sad. The side's not so bad, but it's crushed out the side closest to the wheel. So, and these are very important to the handling of the car. So always check these in the W123 models, and later. Well, I've greased the shaft and fingered the hole until it's nice and wet. And always remember to use non-oil based grease. There we go, nice new bushes in place. Well, I got everything out, now I'm going to wash all the side here out. Because you can't see all that muck underneath the battery. And if you let that rust out, well, that kills the car. Okay. Now I've got to do the fun side. You've got to undo the booster from underneath the dash. Oh, there we go. There's the driver's one done. <laughs> so, I've got to change the master cylinder anyway, so... Meh. I figured while well, I had the battery tray out, I'll wash out all of this area. I've already done behind where the booster is, so it's all nice and clean. Yeah, there should be a drain down there. Oh, there we go, that's much better. Someone's done some sort of repair there, or tried to stop water getting in the cabin. Just put sort of putty stuff around the place. They didn't stop getting uh, water in the cabin, just put it on rubber. But yeah, the drain hole was quite blocked. <laughs> so it's all clean now, I can put the plastic cover on there. Um, yeah, because all the water from the windscreen and everything goes down that corner. And that was just, as you saw before, it's like a dry creek bed. It's pretty bad. It's made a mess of the driveway, I tell you. And here's the driver's side. That was like a compost bin in where the spring was. Not you. And down there was just absolutely filthy, but cleaned out the drain hole. and It's all clean now. That should make the car last longer. Well, since I had to take the brake booster off to do the other job, the push, um, might as well make it look a bit better. It looks shitty. And it makes the whole engine bay look shitty. So I'll see what I can do with it. Well, the battery tray is looking a bit sad. I figure I'll make that look a bit better too. Well, I gave the booster a bit of a paint. So now I've just got to get the master cylinder and put that on and it should all be good. Oh, the battery tray looks better now. Gave it a nice thick coat. That way it lasts the longest. You know, got a battery sitting on it. They usually rub through. I've got some stainless steel bolts and washers and a nut to hold down the retainer. So I'll make it all nice. Well, there we go. Makes a world of difference, just a leak of paint. There's no point putting something all rusty and yuck looking back in. Even the new bolts make it look better. So, yeah. Well, I noticed that the gear selector in this car was awfully sloppy. Didn't feel like it was connected to the gearbox quite well. So I pinged gear selector bushes. That's what these things are. There's two of them on the rod underneath. That's all that was left on the rod. Half of one of them. So it wasn't doing anything. So it was almost in the point where you couldn't get it to go to park. It would stay in reverse, 
even if you put it in park. So when I get these buggers in I'll show you where they go. So that's where the selector bushes go. I didn't have any before. There's one there. And where is it? There's one there. They're both missing. So I didn't really feel like the selector was connected to anything. And now it should be nice. It's not very good for the gearbox, sort of being half in a gear. And it's kind of dangerous because you might try and put it in park and get reverse. So, yeah. That's all fixed now. I'm going to send the calipers off for full reco because they're just old and stiff. Um, as you can see, the pads are pretty fucked. Yeah, I'll get a good close-up. Yeah, you can see they're not healthy and how much effort I had to go to to rip them off because the calipers were seized. It's, um, let's go through the list. This one's not hit the sensor yet, but you can see how worn the discs are because the lip on the discs hit the sensor. That's not good. That one's start, starting to disintegrate. That one's chewed into the sensor. You can see how far in the discs chewed. So that's how worn the discs are on this. And this pad's extra worn because the caliper is probably seized on this one. Well, hopefully this shows a lip on the disc. You can see where it's worn on the pad, but see where it's chewed in on the sensor, that extra bit? Yeah. Discs are quite fucked. You can see at the bottom of the pad, it's got a taper. And that's from the disc being, like, bowed. And I've got to change over stub axle with a new ball joint in it. Because this one's a little bit screwed. It's got up and down movement. And yeah, it's very floppy. So, yeah, oh, that's all done now. Yeah, the top ball joints have been done at some point not too long ago. The left hand lower ball joint was still alright, but this one had obvious movements in it. So, I just order a new stub axle or change over. They're a prick to press in on these. Absolute bastard. So, yeah. I'm just doing the wheel bearings now. Um, I've knocked both shells out, degreased the hub, buffed all the surfaces, I got all the rust off and everything. So, they're all nice, ready to go. So I knocked the new bearing shells in, and uh, I can put the rotors on. So yeah, I hate it when people don't machine these or buff these surfaces where the rotors go. It just screws everything. So you got to make them nice and shiny. Well, it's looking pretty good now. Got Rico master cylinder. Um, all the brakes are working now. Battery's in. Battery tray looks good. The whole engine bay looks good now. So I just got to put the air conditioning compressor on and the air filter. And it's pretty much done. Still got to give it an auto service, but I think that'll be in a week's time. Yeah, all well, new discs. Rico calipers, wheel bearings, pads, new lower ball joint on this side. Just got to knock the dust caps on properly when you put the wheels on. Yeah, all nice. That yeah, came up good. Cool. I managed to get my hands on a good second hand oil gauge pipe. It's not quite right for the car. It's a bit shorter than the other one. But it's got the right fittings on it and it'll run a different path but it goes in. And this is where the little oil pipe ends up. So that gauge there. And you can see it just there, the one with the nut on it. You don't want it breaking in the cabin. <laughs> Pump all the engine oil in here. But yeah, so I'll just tighten that up and 
Put that on the instrument cluster back in. <laughs>